The Chessman and I recently had a collab where we had just 30 minutes to teach an under 1000 Rapid player anything we wanted on stream before the students went head to head in a two game Rapid match. I noticed my student was lacking any proper knowledge within the opening and didn't really follow the basic principles. This was a really big hole because if he does not follow the basic principles within the opening, that can cause the match to go south very, very early on if his opponent knows how to capitalize on his weaknesses. So I decided it would be best to dedicate all 30 minutes of our lesson to helping him learn opening setups as white and black for him to use that follow the basic principles. Hope you enjoy this lesson and stay tuned to see if I was able to equip him with enough knowledge to fix those gaps in the rapid match and to see if our coach and student duo comes out on top. Would you like to introduce yourself to the chat? My name's Kevin. I've been playing since I was like 14, but um, I play like on and off, usually like a game a day or something. And my rapid rating, I think right now is like a 920. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, what I noticed is, do you play D4 as white every game? Not every game, but more often than not, yeah. Okay, so what I noticed a lot is you would play D4, um, however, you kind of didn't necessarily follow the basic principles in a lot of the games. So, for example, um, just to get you set on an opening for the match, my recommendation um, is gonna be the <laughs> Lennon system, because it's super easy to try to understand with the limited time that we have. Because um, one thing that I kind of noticed in your games, I'm going to try to see if we can add a game here just so I can demonstrate what I was seeing. Like, for example, uh, in this game here, right, you started off pretty good, but you want to avoid playing moves like G4, for example. Um, because what I was kind of noticing is if you want to get your king safe, so in the order of basic principles, you want to try to control the center of the board, develop your pieces towards the center, and get your king safe. If you were to castle on the king side, if you've already committed your pawn forward, it's kind of opening up a lot of squares around the king that become weak, right? And this was something that I noticed in, in a lot of uh, your games. Um, you kind of pushed pawns here and there. However, your pieces are a little bit out of sync. You're not really getting a lot of space in your position. And your king is still kind of stuck in the center, which, which isn't that good. The London really just helps you drive forward those basic principles. So you start off with d4. And after they play a move, you're going to bring your bishop out to f4. So once you bring your bishop out, now after they place a move, you're going to keep following basic principles by bringing your pieces towards the center of the board like this. So everyone's kind of working together. You're trying to control these squares in the center here. Okay. And let's say they place a move. Now, again, we want to prioritize getting our king safe, right? So mm -hmm. in order to do that, we need to get this bishop out. So the best way to do that is to move our pawn one step forward. So we can't move it two because we lose the pawn. If we move our pawn up to e3, we support this pawn in the center and it allows our bishop to come out, which allows our king to get safe, right? And that's really what you want to focus on prioritizing. Right, okay. So after here, just to kind of outline how it's going to look, you bring this bishop out and then you castle. So they can play something like this, for example. You bring your bishop out. And within the first four or five moves, your king is safe. Okay. Supposedly safe, but yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's as safe as it's going to get. <laughs> um, okay. So let's go back and just work on those first moves. So if you can get the outline of the setup, that's going to really help you. So first move, queen's pawn goes forward out too, right? D4. Right. Now, after they move, what's the second move? Uh, knight to, uh, what is that, f4? No, so f3, sorry. This is possible. The move that I said first was bishop to f4. Oh, oh gotcha. So okay. you can kind of think of it as the minute the pawn comes out, it opens up this diagonal for the bishop, right? Okay. So yeah. you can think of it as the minute the pawn comes out, the bishop follows it next. So gotcha, okay. Bishop to f4. So they move their knight out to develop. Mm -hmm. Now it's knight to f3. Mm -hmm. Knight to f3. And now let's say they play their pawn up. Okay, and play the pawn to e3. Exactly, yeah, e3. yep. Develop your pieces. You want to prioritize castling, so get this bishop out. Yep, so bishop to d3. Mm -hmm. And then castle and castle. 
So fairly, fairly simple, right? This kind of setup you can use almost regardless what your opponent tends to play. Mm -hmm. um, and just so you can see, this knight you still haven't developed yet, right? So you need to get it out. So just to finish the setup, you'll push your pawn forward to c3, and then you can bring this knight to d2. And the whole purpose of that is if the pawn is on c3, I'm just going to make some moves for black so you can see what I'm talking about. Look at your pawn formation, right? It's this nice kind of upside down V shape where every pawn is nice and defended up until the center pawn. So once right. you have this nice center, your bishop sits nicely on D3 because it sits on this nice open diagonal. And you always want your bishops on an open diagonal, right? If your pieces can mm -hmm. be out and active and on nice diagonals, that's the best. And then this knight, after C3 is done, your knight only has two options, knight to A3, knight to D2. Knights on the rim are grim. I don't know if you've heard that phrase. Um, no. <laughs> but it's a kind of a funny phrase just to try to avoid moving your knights to the corner of the board. So you bring the knight towards the center of the board with knight to d2. And then you have this nice setup finished. Got it, okay. And that's only if I'm white. Yes, this is if you're white. It seemed like in the games that I was seeing, there was a lot of gaps, as we talked about, where you weren't really following the basic principles. And your opponent was definitely able to get an advantage early on. So I think you're going to be white in one of the games, and you're going to be black in one of the games. So at least for white, I can prepare you so you can decide the setup. Um, if uh, your okay. opponent ends up playing like d5 or knight of 6. So um, if you ever get confused or you're not sure what to do, my, my best advice is just try to follow the principles moving towards the center, bring your pieces towards the center on safe squares, and try to get your king castled safely as, as fast as you can. So that was uh, for white. Now for black, from what I saw, you don't really have a setup against e4 or d4. Is that correct? You just kind of play moves? Yeah, because, well, I, I always try to develop the back row, but like, I don't I don't really, when I try to memorize the openings, that's when it, it kind of goes all bonkers for me. Okay, okay. Yeah, so <laughs> um, memorizing openings is, uh, is not something you have to prioritize at your level, but having a good, solid setup is important, right? Because um, if you can develop your pieces to just solid squares and try to take as much space as you can within an opening, that's all that really matters. Um, so I'm going to give you a simple setup, kind of like what I did for D4. And again, if you, you don't have to remember this move for move. I know it's a sequence of moves that's hard to remember, but the point is... Um, I want you to kind of follow the, the basic principles. That's what I'm going to be emphasizing the most. So when your opponent takes the center, you also want to take the center. I saw in one of your games, I think you played like G6, and another game you kind of played both your knights out the minute your opponent moved their pawn forward. The -hmm. problem is when you kind of start off an opening where you're just moving your knights towards the center of the board, it's good that you're doing that. However, you're allowing them to kind of take control of the center. You see this? And they control okay. all these squares. And now it's kind of hard to get your pawns out there. And I think in the game, they just kind of rolled you over with their pawns first. So mm. the safest approach is when they try to contest the center, you also try to contest the center. Okay. So I would recommend just a simple king's pawn versus king's pawn. Now, it's very common for the next move to bring their knight outs. What's the reason they're playing this move? They try to, to dwell. You never want the knight to go to the, the corner or the, yeah, the side. So I guess they're just trying to control the center. Mm -hmm. Yep, so they're developing their piece towards the center. And what are they attacking? The pawn. Mm -hmm. So when they're attacking this pawn, how can you develop your knight to defend this pawn towards the center of the board? Um, knight to c6. Mm hmm Exactly. Yeah. Very good. So, they attack your pawn, you bring your piece out and defend your pawn. Let's say they bring their bishop out, they're trying to get their king safe. Mm hmm And your priority is to try to get your king safe as well. So, how can right. you try to develop your pieces on the king side? Do I, do I play the other knight to g6? Uh, no, to F6. So you can. Um, for the purpose of the time that we have, I'm going to recommend you bring your bishop out first before your knight outs. Now, the reason why, 
I don't know if you've ever fallen for this or seen this, but have you ever seen this move, the fried liver attack? I never knew what it's called, but yeah, I don't usually fall for it unless it's like the fifth game I played today, that, <laughs> and then I get kind of careless. Gotcha. Yeah. So this, unless you know the theory after, there's only one move that saves this position. And then you have to kind of know the theory beyond that so you don't get in trouble. So the way I solve this by not having to deal with this is I just bring the bishop out first. So now when you bring the bishop out, they don't have knight g5 because your queen is still open, right? Ah, uh, okay. So yeah, they're see. not able to play that. So let's say, I mean, they can castle or they can move their pawn out. It doesn't really matter. Let's say they move their pawn out so that they can try to play knight g5 again because now their bishop defends this square, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say they're still trying to play that. Now you bring your knight out because now that your bishop is out, if they play this knight forward, what move does this allow you to play now? To castle? Exactly. You're able to castle. And now your rook is helping defend this pawn. Something that's important to note is don't be afraid of them taking this pawn and s trading both their knight and bishop out for your rook. This is a better trade for you if this ends up happening. Because you're going to have two pieces, right? You take the knight and the bishop, and they only took your rook. So that's always going to be a worse trade for them. Isn't that equal in material, though? So if you go by points, yes, it's six points to six points. But you technically take another piece, right? Because they're giving up two pieces for this one piece. Mm, okay. So Mostly. if you look outside of points, if you look from like a positional standpoint, it's worse for them to do that. Okay. Got it. So this is an easy way to avoid any problems in the opening. And again, you're developing to the center bringing your pieces out towards the center, and you're castling as fast as possible. So, as simple as, as that can get. So let's um, let's go through that again so you can feel comfortable. So let's say they play yeah. e4. So you match it with um, the pawn in front of the knight, uh, two spaces up, mm -hmm. e5? Exactly, yes. Now let's say they develop their knight to try to attack the pawn. And then you move then you move the knight to c6. Mm -hmm. Very good. You develop your knight to defend this pawn. Then I move the bishop to c5. Exactly. So you bring the bishop out before the knight so you don't have to worry about any Freud liver stuff. Right. Um, and then I can move the knight out to f6. Uh, yeah, f6. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then, I mean, I guess I castled to get the king to safety as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. Yep, very good. Um, and then after your king is safe, your priority is to get your minor pieces developed. And this is the last minor piece to develop, right? So mm -hmm. if you want to get your bishop out, you can just move this pawn forward one square. It helps support the pawn and the bishop in the center, and it opens up your light square bishop. And then it's a game from there. Gotcha. Okay. Bye. Make it seem, you make uh, opening seem easy. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm trying to, obviously 30 minutes is like barely any time, right? Um, especially if you are you don't really have set openings, but this can at least get you, if they end up playing E4, this is as simple as a, as a structure can get. Um, my advice, because it is a 10 minute game, uh, don't feel the need to, to rush in the opening because you have time, right? Um, it's 10 plus 0, so there's no increments, but you do have time to think. If your opponent ends up playing something else, like let's say within e4, they, they switch it up, or they play something that isn't one of these moves that we talked about, take your time and don't be on autopilot mode, right? Just kind of ask yourself, okay, why did they play the move that they played? Um, do they have a threat with that move? And if they don't, just try to keep developing kind of following the principles towards the center and trying to prioritize your king's safety, right? If there's any two questions I can recommend you ask yourself when your opponent makes a move and before you make a move is, did my opponent move to a safe square once they make their move? Because your opponent might just blunder a piece, right? And then what is their threat when they make a move? That's going to be very important. And then before okay. you make a move, 
are you moving to a safe score? So you just ask yourself the opposite question, right? That's going to be the, if there's any question you remember to ask yourself, ask if you're moving to a safe square, because that can prevent you from potentially just blundering a piece or walking into something that you just missed. Those are the most important questions. Um, and if your opponent has a threat, try to make sure that your move is stopping their threat as well. Yeah, so let's uh, let's go back to this real quick. So we have like 12 minutes left. So I think what I'm going to do is just kind of prioritize making sure you have good setups going and that you remember them. Yeah. Okay, so let's say you're starting off from whites. What's your first move? Um, uh, D4. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And oh gosh, I'm gonna confuse with black now. Is it is it knight to d3? So when this pawn comes out, what does it open up? Uh oh, the bishop. Mm -hmm. Oh, the forget that. Okay, so bishop to f4 then. Mm -hmm. No worries. And now it's it's knight to f3. Yep, very good. And then the. Oh, it's either a pawn to e3 or the knight to c3. I forget which one goes first. I think it's the knight. So prioritize king safety. Oh, okay, okay. So the pawn then mm -hmm. to, to e3, yep. Yep. Um, the one thing that... So this is called the London system. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, uh, yeah, kind of. Okay. So one thing that's distinct about it is the pawn structure. And if you remember, it's an upside down V. Oh, gotcha. So gotcha. if you're ever trying to remember, hey, where do all my pawns go? Remember, this is kind of the structure that you're going to want with your pawns. Just as a little okay. little tip. Okay. So here. Okay, so then bishop to d3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bishop to d3. If they end up taking... You can just take back with your queen, and that's totally fine. So you're just kind of offering a trade. Yeah. Um, so let's say they go for the trade. Then you take back with your queen. Let's say they move the bishop out. Okay, then I castle. Yes, very good. They castle, and now you need to bring out your last minor piece. Yes, so that is 9 to d2. Yes, very good. And then um, on the next move, just make sure you connect your pawns, right? So that right. way your pawn has uh, support in the center. Um, and this is just something to to help you in the future. Um, the, the coordinates, like the squares, right? Like E4, D4, C5, etc. They're kind of, um, the coordinates are like the language of chess, right? So mm -hmm. if you can memorize, like if I say, hey, what's this move? If you can instantly be able to say, hey, that's d4, knight f6, g3, um, getting very familiar with the coordinates is going to help you a lot in the future, especially if you want to improve. Because if you're able to list out the coordinates faster, it's going to help you think faster and also be able to calculate more, right? Um, so that's yeah, just kind of I a think tip. I've always played yeah, I think I always played growing up where it didn't have that, like on a cheap board that didn't have it. So gotcha. I think that's fine. Don't really remember them. I gotcha. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so we have that. Now let's review um, if your opponent plays e4. Okay, so I match it with uh, e5. Yes, nice. Uh, knight to c6. Mm hmm. Knight uh, to c5. Yes, very good. You bring the bishop out first. Nice. So you don't have to worry about any complications. Um, and then the last minor piece. Um, but I think in this case, it's knight to f6 instead of um, e7, right? Yes. Yep. So you bring this okay. knight out to f6. Yeah, knight to the center of the board here. Um, in the London system, I'll, I'll talk about it again, but just so I can compare the two. The, the mm -hmm. only reason why you bring the knight out in the London uh, the way we bring it out is because, remember, the London pawn structure, you have your pawns here and here mm -hmm. to form this upside down V. So the square is taken from the knight. So that's why you move the knight to D2 instead. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, got it. Okay, and after here? Castle. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get your light square bishop out, what is one way that you can do that? Uh, pawn to d6. Yes, very good. Pawn to d6 helps support your center and open up this diagonal for your bishop. Okay, nice. 
So cool. not too bad. Yeah, you you honestly did well. And I don't know the chances that your opponent plays d4. Um, but if you were able to pay attention to any of Black's moves when we were talking about the London, I would honestly recommend something similar where you just copy their pawn, right? So they bring their pawn out, you bring your pawn out to the center. Mm -hmm. And if they end up playing into a London system like I recommended to you, just as a, a highlight so you can kind of see, you just want to bring your pieces out in castle as fast as possible, kind of prioritizing the same thing. If your opponent plays d4, there's two ways they either go down most of the time. They bring this bishop out like you're going to do, and they play the London system. Uh -huh. Or they bring their pawn out. Do you know what this is called? No, I don't. So no. this is the, the Queen's Gambit, like the TV show. <laughs> oh, okay. I do know what it is. Okay. Yeah. Um, so my recommendation is to not take this pawn and to keep trying to help this pawn in the center. So you play e6, just kind of pushing this pawn out to support this pawn. Because when you play e6, it also opens up your bishop, right? Which is good. Right. So if you open okay. up your bishop, this allows you to then develop your knights. Bring your bishop out. You can just move it out one square in castle. And that's just keeping it extremely simple. Because players that um, have to face d4 it's not very natural for them because 9 out of 10 people especially when they're a beginner learning chess they start out with e4 right so right. starting with d4 isn't super common so I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible just so you don't have too much extra to to remember in terms of a setup um, so you'll prioritize castling your king which means your king side minor pieces will come out first and then you'll develop your queen side minor pieces after Gotcha. Okay. Easy enough. Awesome. All right. So we have five minutes left. So I think what's going to be best is we're just going to run through you playing white and then you defending um, as black against e4 and d4. Just run through those setups one more time and you should be good to go. Okay. Let's hope I don't blank out here. <laughs> um, all right. So pawn to d4. Mm -hmm. Let's say I start with my knight out. Okay, yeah, so knight to, oh no, bishop to f4? Exactly. Pawn comes out, it's opening up your bishop, so bring the bishop out. There I go here. Okay, knight to f3. Mm -hmm. uh, knight to d2. That is totally fine to play. Um, you can do that as long as you make sure you're bringing this bishop out, right? That's your priority. Uh, so in gotcha. every setup that we've talked about, the priority is developing your king side first so you can castle. Okay, so then uh, pawn to e3. Mm -hmm. Yep. And in the game, if you end up playing this instead, I don't think that you messed up or something. It's just a different move order, so that's fine. Okay. Okay. So let's say um, we talked about if our opponent's bishop was here, right? Then you would develop your bishop here and trade. The same mm -hmm. thing would happen if they bring out this bishop to d6. So here again, you can just trade and then keep developing your pieces, and that's totally fine. Just keep it simple. So take. Okay. They take back, and now how would you resume your development? Um, I would move the bishop to, yes, just d3. Exactly, yep. Keep it on this nice open diagonal here, which is good. And then castles, castles. Mm -hmm. And then remember, just complete the pawn formation, bring your knight out, and your set. And it's a game for me. Got them. it. Let's say they play e4. Yeah, so match it to e5. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do, do. Knight to c6. Yes, very good. Develop, defend the pawn. Uh, bishop to c5. Mm -hmm. And knight to f6. Nice. Then castle. Mm -hmm. And then how do you get this bishop out? Uh, pawn to d6. Yes. Awesome. Very good. d4. Um, uh, match it. Match it with, uh, yep. Mm -hmm. Very d5. good. Let's say they go here. Don't take the pawn. Um, pawn to e6. Mm -hmm. 
And then you have the highlight of how you develop, right? Prioritize your king side pieces always so that your king can castle soon. Okay. Yep. Oh, and yeah. with the last minute left, what are the like important questions to make sure you ask yourself before every move? Um, what are they attacking? Or like what are they what are the threats? Mm hmm And what Ooh, I don't remember the other Did one. Did they move to a safe square? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's important. And then, the, and then when I make a move, just the opposite question. Exactly. Are you moving to a safe square and are you stopping their threat if they had any? Okay. <laughs> See how this goes. This might be a train wreck. <laughs> no worries. No worries at all. Just do your best. Remember, take your time. If you're ever confused of something that they played or you're don't, if there's something that we didn't go over, just take your time, look at the position, and just play what you think the best move is. Alrighty. Best of luck. Thanks. Gonna need it. <laughs> take care.